in Colorado Springs, where a community is grieving this morning following the deadly mass shooting at an LGBTQ nightclub there. Five people were killed, 25 others hurt after a man wearing body armor, armed with an AR-15 style rifle and a handgun, opened fire inside Club Q just before midnight. The one person who survived the shooting telling the New York Times he thought the gunshots were part of the music on Saturday night, but then he saw the muzzle of a gun and ran. Police say the tragedy could have been much worse if not for the brave actions of two people inside that club. While the suspect was inside of the club, at least two heroic people inside the club confronted and fought with the suspect and were able to stop, stop the suspect from continuing to kill and harm others. We owe them a great debt of thanks. Police have identified the gunman as 22-year-old Anderson Lee Aldrich, but have not yet determined a motive. Joining us now from Colorado Springs, NBC News correspondent Priscilla Thompson. Priscilla, good morning. What are you seeing and hearing there, and what more do we know about a potential motive here? Yeah. Well, Willie, good morning. You see this memorial behind me that has grown over the past 24 hours as people from this community come here to pay their respects for those five victims. What we are learning at this moment, we know uh, that there are those 25 people who were injured. At least uh, 18 of them are still hospitalized, some in critical condition. And of course, the big question is why? Why did this happen? Why did this shooter walk into this club and commit such a devastating act of violence. We know that there was someone by the same name and with the same birth date who was arrested last year for making bomb threats to uh, his mother, but we don't know the status of that case. Officials have declined to say whether or not the suspect in this case is the same person that was arrested last year, but they do say that they are looking at that case in relation to what happened here uh, over the weekend. And I have been speaking to community members who have been coming here. A lot of people just overcome with emotion as they come to pay their respects. I spoke to one person, Sophie, and I want to play a little bit of what she, uh, what they said to me about how it feels right now to be someone of the LGBTQ plus community after a tragedy like this has happened here. Take a listen. This is not an easy day. This is a lot to just wake up to as a transgender person living in Colorado Springs. This is a hard city to live in already, so waking up to something this um, in your face is just a reminder of the hate that we live with in this city every day and the love that we need to fight it with. We can't fight hate with hate, so we tried to bring a little bit of love here today. And still so much hurt in this community, but also so many uh, questions and also praise for those two people that you noted who uh, essentially fought with the gunman, the mayor saying that they were able to take a gun from him and actually hit the gunman and get him on the ground. And just to give you context about the timeline here, they say that within one minute, those patrons rushed that gunman. So within one minute, uh, he was able to kill five people, injure 25 people. Uh, and we're still working to learn about if there were any red flag laws that might have been uh, raised here about this suspect and how exactly he obtained this gun and of course the biggest question of all why Willie and to that question Priscilla we know and we respect the fact that the police want to wait until they know for sure to ascribe a motive to what happened here but this is an LGBTQ club they had advertised a drag brunch on Sunday morning for transgender remembrance day and this man according to the witnesses anyway walked in with a rifle and just started shooting indiscriminately so where will the investigation go from here what else will police be looking at Right. So police say that they have already been working to obtain multiple search warrants to search uh, the suspect's home, looking at those social media accounts to see if they can find anything that shows that he had hate towards a targeted group. Of course, in this case, the LGBTQ 
LGBTQ plus community. And of course, that suspect is expected to survive. He was injured. He is hospitalized. But uh, police are working to interview and actually speak to him and try to see what they can learn from him about why he chose to commit this act of violence, speaking to family members and friends, and of course, speaking to the witnesses who were here over the weekend about what they heard, what they saw as this incident unfolded. But I will tell you, a lot of the people that I've spoken to on the ground here feel like this was absolutely a hate crime. They feel like this was a targeted attack. This is known to be a safe space for this group in this community, and they feel like there is no reason that someone would have walked into this club and committed this crime were it not uh, for hate against this community, Willie. A terrible, terrible tragedy. It could have been much worse, as you say, if not for the heroism of some of the people inside that club. NBC's Priscilla Thompson in Colorado Springs. Priscilla, thanks so much.